is this might be the first time when some of you have gathered at a satsang. A satsang means an association of people for the purpose of discovering truth. And when you saw me greeting this way, it means that with thought, word, and deed, I salute the divinity within you, because everyone is potentially and actually divine. What man has to do in order to get rid of his sufferings is to find that divinity within and it is through meditation and spiritual practices that one finds this divinity and finding divinity means something very simple the people regard it to be so far and yet it is much more closer than your own very breath what man needs today is to find that integration between mind, body and spirit. People suffer and have miseries because they live a fragmented life. Now, if they could live in this integration, life could be nothing else but joy. On this course, every word that I'd be speaking to you would be of total personal experience. I don't speak from books. I do not prepare talks, so the normal pattern is this, that you ask any question you like, and I'll start talking on it. The lull before the storm. Uh -huh. <laughs> Mind you, we do need the lulls and the storms, or else this world will never function. They've really lit me up, haven't they? <laughs> the answers are based on the level of the question. And the more deeper you go, the deeper will the answer be. You'd like to know what is God? I see him in front of me, you. Everyone is divine. And what man observes is just the manifestation of the manifester. Because man functions only with his five senses. And the five senses are very limited because normally we use a very small fraction of our minds. The fraction is so small that Einstein, who was regarded to be a genius, only used 8% of his mind. Yeah. Now, the mind would have uh, three levels. The conscious level that makes you think, and the subconscious level which contains all your past impressions, and then you have the super conscious level of the mind, which is the universal mind. And every person has the ability, through spiritual practices, to reach the universal mind or the super conscious level of the mind. Now, what is the super conscious level of the mind? There is only one mind. Hmm? But we, because of our past experiences, actions, deeds, good or bad, have compartmentalized ourselves hmm? and made, and which made us believe that we are individual. Hmm? It is like uh, you take a plastic bag of water and you put it in the middle of a river. Yeah. Now the water in the bag is just the same water that's in the river. Hmm? But the sheath gives it the individuality. And then as more and more experience are gained, you add more and more sheaths 
to this bag until the water in the bag is not seen and you forget your true nature which is divine because functioning with the five senses you do not see that inner self of you hmm? for do, do the scriptures not say and I would repeat this a million times over and over again seek ye first the kingdom of heaven within and all else shall be added unto thee so what is that kingdom of heaven within that kingdom of heaven within is that divine indefinable energy hmm? I can talk to you about God hmm? I can show you the path towards God and the reason I can show you is because I've traveled that path and known God and have become one with him hmm? but you cannot explain it the reason why you can't explain it because explanation is normally from the conscious level of the mind where the left hemisphere of your brain is functioning and uh, that left hemisphere of the brain is mostly analytical now how can you analyze with a finite mind that which is infinite for divinity or God uh, is normally expressed as he hmm? but really speaking it's neither I call it it it's neither he nor she it is a very a very fine energy now is this the knowledge of divinity can only come about experientially right. but to get that experience a lot of preparation is required and how does one prepare is to meditate search within spiritual practices self-analysis weighing pros and cons of how we live our lives mm -hmm moral values the do's and don'ts to a great extent hmm? fine and then you reach the pure stage where you as the pure one then merge away into that purity which we call God so any person in this lifetime can have that experience if they are diligent enough if they are not then naturally they'll go on through all the sufferings which life holds for them really speaking as I've said before in some talk somewhere around the world that there should be no suffering and you will have no suffering at all if you make your life an offering what do you offer yourself to hmm? you offer yourself to service of mankind for that is the truest reflection of God on this earth in its present stage of evolution so by the service of man you would be serving God hmm? so therefore there is no differentiation and you can see the divinity in others if you first see the divinity in yourself hmm? the, the analogy I like to use always is I could explain you the texture of honey I could send it to a laboratory and have the chemical analysis etc etc but you still will know nothing about honey your knowledge of honey will be peripheral but when you taste the honey then only would you know the sweetness of honey now what's the sense of having a jar of honey on your shelf if you do not partake of it 
go eat it, taste it, and see how beautiful and sweet it is. And that very honey, that very divine energy that is there sweetens your life. In that integration, you will find harmony. And what are you harmonizing yourself with? You're harmonizing your exterior self with your inner self so that you function in totality, the body and the mind and that spiritual force within functions in totality. Hmm? I have been in younger days trampling around all the Himalayas, going to various caves and ashrams and meeting various gurus. Hmm? I learned a bit from everyone until I found my own guru, Swami Pavitranandji. Hmm? You might have the photos in your pocket. We'll show you later. Fine. Good. So, with the guidance of a true master, you get a, a whole lot of bogus so-called gurus, because no man should ever speak of divinity if he has not experienced divinity himself. He has no right to do that. Hmm? Take the example of university professors. They've studied every philosophy in the world hmm, to become a professor. And yet, they are more muddled uh, than all of you sitting here. Yes. So, that mental analysis, gaining knowledge is not enough. What man has to gain is through the path of knowledge, analysis and inquiry, you gain wisdom. There's a great difference between knowledge and wisdom. Knowledge is a mental acquisition, while wisdom is not only knowledge, but also experience combined. Hmm? So, man's quest, why, did he, why does he want to find God? Hmm? Why? Because he wants to feel happy. And all the theologies of the world has taught this, that it is only through divinity that you could find and achieve uh, that peace. Hmm? Therefore we find our theology say, hmm? man know thyself. No religion says man know God because you cannot know him. Know thyself, and automatically you will know divinity. Hmm? And then you could truly use the words of our Lord Jesus that I and my Father are one. So here is the process. You proceed from duality, I and thou concept, hmm? and then you reach a qualified non-dualism, and then you reach non-dualism in its entirety. Right. Duality, Jesus used to preach duality to the peasants that could not understand him too well. He used to say, pray to thy Father in heaven. Very good. That, in, in other theologies, it's called a bhakti yoga the path of devotion. You've got to have an object of devotion. And then Jesus goes on to say to people that would understand him better, he would say that divinity is like a tree, the trunk, and you are the branches and the leaves. Hmm? That is qualified non-dualism and then you reach proper non-dualism or monism, which would make you realize that I and he am but one. Now, I'm fond of making very revolutionary statements. God never created this world. Hmm? Creation requires a will. 
and will stems from the mind. Hmm? If it stems from the mind, then there would be limitations. Hmm? But yet everything around us is so complete, if you can only but see it. So I'd rather say that the, the universe is a manifestation of the manifestor. Hmm? Now, as fire would give of heat, or a flower would give of fragrance, hmm? so it is a nature. It is the nature of fire to give of heat, otherwise it would not be fire. It is the nature of a flower to give of fragrance, or else it would not be a flower. In a similar way, the nature for want of a better word, the nature of divinity is to manifest. Hmm? So, this manifestation we see around us is a superimposition upon the divine energy itself. Hmm? And it is because of the superimposition and the molecular and atomic structures of the emanation or manifestation that this universe has been formed. Hmm? And the variety has come about when different kinds of molecules uh, uh, combined with each other and created a different product. And that is how this world started evolving. Uh, you take water, H2O, right, and they are totally opposing uh, substances. Hmm? Right, hydrogen and oxygen are opposing substances, but the combination made it into a third substance, which is water. Likewise, this has been happening all the time. So since the Big Bang, Theory, you might have read about it, in this vast explosion when it a shot off all those millions and billions of atoms, billions and billions and billions of atoms, they started multiplicating itself, duplicating, replicating, mixing with other molecular structures, and that is why we find all the different elements in the world. Now the basic five elements that composes the universe is fire, water, air, ether, and earth. Those are the five basic elements that composes this universe. And we see differences not in its original substance, but we see differences because name and form. Hmm? Name and form only. That is why we see differences. That is why we differentiate between one thing and the other. Hmm? So when the questioner asked, hmm, tell me about God, I say, there you are sitting there. Hmm? Because I do not look at your face. I do not look at your mind, I look at your inner spirit, and that is divinity. And when man learns to look at the inner spirit of others, then only will he know the true meaning of love. For God is love, and love is God. And there too, love is an indefinable quality. Hmm? Two, flock, uh, two sparks just ignite together. Hmm? There is no accident, I was telling someone this morning. Everything is a plan, a divine plan. Now, what is the divine plan? Not that neutral energy I spoke about, the impersonal God, but the divine plan lies in the manifestation where things have to operate 
in a certain way. If you study the universe, you will find everything is so precise. There is no accident whatsoever. Hmm? Like attracts like, one thing combines with another, and it's all there, all the time, indestructible. Nothing, nothing, nothing is ever destroyed. Hmm? For if any, even matter, if matter is destroyed, you will destroy God, which is impossible. Hmm? And so, it is all the same, it is all one. The only thing that's required is the realization that I am divine and so is everything around me divine. And when one feels and experiences the divinity within, then you would find total peace, joy, bliss. No sadness, no sorrows. You find that. Now, because of the structure of manifestation, that caused the mind. And that, at the highest level of the mind, which I mentioned before, the superconscious level of the mind, and there lies the first formation of how this universe began. And what did the mind do? What was the mind at that level of its total purity? It was sound. First was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word is God. So, the manifestation one has to reach the highest level, and that reaching that level would mean that you have reached Christ consciousness, or Buddha consciousness, or Krishna consciousness. These all labels, it's just one consciousness that there is. There is no separation. There can only be one consciousness. So, to know God and to experience God. Uh, many things I will repeat over just to drive the point home. Hmm? Right, one, through spiritual and meditational practices, which is based upon your inner vibrations. Right, you are nothing else but vibration. Hmm? And anything you can touch, see, smell, this chair, this table, all of you, are nothing else but congealed vibrations. Hmm? So, if you are boiled down hmm? um, mind, body and spirit, you will only hear a sound, the primal sound, the word. Now, when a true spiritual master gives you practices, he goes into meditation on you and reaches that level of superconsciousness and see your state of evolution, your emotional state, your physical state, and accordingly he will prescribe the practices that is needed by you. There is no sense having a shelf full of medicine bottles and trying one after the other. It could cause you great harm, it could kill you. But if you have a qualified physician hmm, to say, look, use that bottle of medicine, that will help you, and then the path becomes easier and smoother. Hmm? And that is how, uh, this is for the new people that are here, hmm? this is how we work. Everyone is treated on totally individual basis. And the purpose is this. We want happiness. That's all we want. And that total bliss and happiness is nothing else but divinity. Hmm? You come from divinity and you have to go back home. Hmm? 
Why spend millions of lifetimes suffering when there's a direct path from the conscious mind through the subconscious and right to that super conscious level which is the highest a level of relativity and then very spontaneously and automatically you enter the area of divinity and you live it. Hmm? I don't believe in God. I don't. Hmm? I do not believe in God. I live God. And that's what we want in this world. Living gods, not conceptual gods. Hmm? If you study the various theologies, you'll find one religion will say that God's got four arms. Hmm? Another one will say that he's sitting up on a throne up there somewhere. Hmm? And uh, with a couple of thousand bookkeepers writing down uh, what Girish has done, uh, what uh, you have done, what you have done, and keeping a record. No such thing. That's a different subject. We'll go into it during the course on how karma works and how it functions. Good. So, that is the reality of life. People look for reality which they will find, but underlying reality, there is something which is called actuality. Hmm? You go and see a magician show, hmm? and you find the magician doing wonderful tricks on the stage, cutting, sewing a woman in half, Hmm? And then you'll find uh, uh, him disappearing elephants and motor cars. Hmm? And to you it seems real. Yeah. But in your mind, you say to yourself, this is a trick. Right. That's the difference between seeing the reality of life and yet having in mind, yet being conscious that this is not actuality. So, what we do is proceed from our conceptions of divinity to actual experience of divinity. And then we can say, well lived this life, well lived. Nothing, 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 nothing will bother you then when you reach a little higher stage. Mm. The whole mountain round here might crumble down and you will, do, and you will not bat an eyelid. But now what do we do? Oh, Auntie Jane said a nasty word last week, so you keep on mauling over it all the time, creating unhappiness for yourself. Mm. And in most, in most probability, Auntie Jane might have forgotten what she had said. Hmm? See, how we magnify things because we do not, we only use a very small portion of the mind. But if we can use the totality of the mind, then we will see life in a totally different perspective. <laughs>